Today we're gonna review the MacBook Air M1 2020 edition one year later, guys. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you what I found. Hey, Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the MacBook Air M1 2020. It's been one year since I bought this laptop. One year. I bought this in April of last year. This is the base model of the MacBook Air M1 2020. So eight gigs of RAM, M1 chip. It's actually missing one core compared to the Mac mini or the MacBook Pro. But I gotta say, I didn't really miss it. So it's been one year and I have to say, this machine is absolutely amazing to me for what I do, which is YouTube videos, reviews, 3D printing, photo editing, and many, many other things that are quite complex and that I really couldn't do with my 2018 MacBook Air with the Intel i5. Speaking of which, I'm not a fanboy when it comes to Mac. I am and I am. I've had a lot of issues with Macs in the past. Just to be clear, I'm one of the victims of the 2011 MacBook Pro's GPU problem. And that's been one of the most popular videos that I produced was how to fix it, which you can see that video here. So after that experience, I refused to spend more than $1,000 on a MacBook because that's basically what I would spend on a regular average laptop anyway. And it's been my experience that they only last anywhere from three to five years. Any laptop, three to five years is usually your limit. Either they're getting older and the battery doesn't hold up or other problems where they're just getting outdated. So $1,000 for me as an investment for my channel, for my like leisure for many other things is well worth it to me. $2,000 to me really isn't worth it when the computer will only last two and a half years, maybe three. I'd be fine with that if it would last the full five, maybe even into seven. I don't think that's too unreasonable. Apple did stand behind the 2011s after a lot of protesting and a lot of other things that happened, but I don't want to get into all that. So I decided for $1,000, I'm going to buy a 2018 MacBook Air, and that's what I'm willing to do it because I really like Apple, I like their operating system, and I like their ecosystem. I don't like their business practices, and I've expressed that on my show numerous times. Which you can see in my 2018 MacBook Air review right here. It's a little outdated. If you want to go back and take a look at it, it's fine. Three months later, I made this video where I was having problems with the MacBook Air. It just would not take a charge and it was having problems. Apple did stand behind it, but I was without a computer for two weeks, which was very frustrating, especially when I just spent $1,000 and I was still making payments on it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when Apple said they were making their own chips and they were going with the M1, I was a little upset about it because it felt like they were gonna kinda go backwards. I didn't think they'd be able to compete with Intel and AMD, I'm thinking, Probably not a good idea. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> they really knew their stuff and they really put together this ARM chip. And personally, I feel like it's kind of revolutionizing the computer industry right now. I think a lot of stuff is gonna start moving towards ARM and getting rid of that old x86 platform. But I, I have to say, I don't know a ton about it. I just been going by what I've been reading lately and everybody says that we're gonna move towards the ARM architecture, that even Intel is trying to do that, that AMD is trying to do that because they are so fast and they're able to pack in so much more power into these chips. So after reading a lot of reviews, I realized that the M1 chip was actually a really powerful chip and that it could possibly do a lot of things. So I went out and I bought one and man was I wrong about the M1. It was an impressive chip. It was really awesome and you can see my review here. I was really in shock with this little computer when I got it a year ago. So in the beginning it had some bugs and I did a video on that and I told you what programs weren't working and what programs I was having problems with. It's almost been like two years since the M1 came out and they fixed a lot of those problems and I'm happy to report it and I reported it on my channel several times when I realized that there was either a fix or they updated the software among other social media platforms that I do. One of the issues that people kept pointing out over and over was they were talking about the RAM swap and if you don't know about that basically if you got the base model like I have here you have eight gigs of RAM when it needs more RAM it actually uses the SSD on this and people were worried about it degrading the SSD because it was using it as RAM and they were worried that it was going to wear out the SSD because it kept writing to the SSD that it was eventually going to wear out the SSD and decay it faster. Well, it looks like Apple's pretty much in the clear when it comes to that because I haven't seen 
seen too much degrading on my SSD, anything that would be normal wear and tear. And I'll be honest with you, I really don't notice a slowdown. I don't notice any hard drive space being taken out and it really hasn't been an issue. It's not only me that's saying that, there's a lot of people that are reporting that there's really no problem that these SSDs were designed for that basically. And that's been my assumption so far and I haven't seen any problem with it yet. And to be honest with you, they said by the time you would be using up that SSD that it'd be time for a new computer anyway. So almost like five years into it too, you would actually see some problems. I may be wrong, it may be a problem in the future. We'll have to see. The battery on this has been really incredible so far. The only problem that I have seen is when I hook an external hard drive. I am actually editing a lot of my videos and I'll be editing this video with this laptop. And I hook an external hard drive because unfortunately the hard drive space on this, they don't give you that much hard drive space, not unless you want to fork out hundreds of dollars more. So I went with the basic 256 hard drive on this to save space because video editing takes terabytes a lot of the time. I use an external drive like this one right here. It's an SSD and I hook it up into it with a USB type C and I have noticed that it drains the battery a lot faster when I'm using this hard drive. I don't know really why that is. Maybe it has to do with the power management because this type of hard drive, I mean, it is an SSD, but maybe it's just a consuming more power than Apple was anticipating for external devices. I don't know why that is, but it definitely uses power more. And plus I'm video editing, which is a power hog right there too. So that's on top of it. I just noticed when I leave this idle and this is connected, it still drains the battery a lot faster, but it's still really impressive for the battery power. And I do keep it connected quite a bit. I I mean, most of the time, an external hard drive is connected to this laptop. Now, power cycles within a year, I've used 219 power cycles on this machine, and the battery health is at 90%. Now, that's not exactly bad for a year, but it's not exactly good. I was really hoping for more of just a 5% decrease instead of 10% decrease in the battery life, but it's still at 90%. It still hasn't been giving me a problem, and it is working really well. Another problem that I've heard reports about with the M1 is that it'll randomly turn off. I personally, I've only had this problem one time where everything just shut off. I'm going to say this. I do have another Mac. I have an iMac 2015 i5 16 gigs of RAM. You can look up the specs for that computer. It has a high-end graphics card with two gigs of RAM on it. I'll put it right here because I forget things. I find myself choosing this laptop with only eight gigs of RAM with the M1 chip and graphics that are built into the chip. I've been choosing this over my iMac several times because a lot of times they're very comparable and a lot of times this is a lot faster. Now I know that's an older computer but it was a high spec high-end machine at the time when I bought it. It was $2,000 machine and and I find myself editing and doing stuff on this because it's that much easier and that much faster, which I never thought I would do that with a MacBook Air. And it's highly capable of controlling my whole channel, controlling everything that I needed to do. It is a powerhouse of a machine. So much so that everybody that comments on my 2011 MacBook Air GPU fix, I've been telling them, go out and get one of these. They're under $1,000 now, especially with the M2 that's come out. And you can grab one of these, and it's probably gonna be 10 times more powerful than that little 2011. And guys, you know, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything, but it's a 11 year old computer. It's time to let it go and upgrade. And this is definitely the upgrade to go with. And I mean that with all respect, guys. I understand that people don't have money for buying a new computer all the time, but it's priorities. I'm a true believer that everybody has money for what they want and you sacrifice to get the things that you want. And I don't make a lot of money and I sacrifice a lot of times to get the things that I want. Simple things like bringing your lunch to work, not buying $5 coffees. I do a lot without so I can have the technology I want. I'm not some rich guy that just goes around buying Macs. I figure out ways to get it. Either put money aside or I get zero interest credit cards and sacrifice why I'm paying that off and do what I need to do. So I would definitely choose the base model on this one. It is a great pick for me. I personally don't know if the 16 gigs would really be worth it, especially if you're trying to get the price point down. And speaking of the price point, now that the Mac M2 came out, you can get this cheaper, a lot cheaper. And you might be asking yourself, shouldn't I just get the M2? There's been several reports that I've been watching and reading and going through that actually say in some aspects, 
This is very comparable and sometimes it's faster when it comes to multitasking. And you could read articles and figure it out for yourself. I know it's faster, I know it is faster, but there are certain things that this thing is still up to par. So you can get a MacBook Air that's a powerhouse for around 800 bucks, base model. It's definitely well worth it for that. I'm not bashing the new one. I do like the new one. I like the fact that they brought MagSafe back because I've expressed in several of my videos that I love the MagSafe and I really want that back. But they did change the design a little bit and I like this design. But if you could save quite a few hundred dollars and get this computer, I would definitely say it's worth it. If you look at my past videos, you'll understand why I like this one so much. Compared it against my 2015, my 2018 MacBook Air, it came out with flying colors. I work with DaVinci Resolve on this when I edit my videos. iMovie on this when I edit my videos. I use Infinity Photo, works great. A whole bunch of 3D printing software I use on this handles everything like a champ. Even Blender, if anybody's out there with the 3D modeling, really work great on this. I've been very, very, very happy with my purchase and I would highly recommend this MacBook Air to anybody that's looking to have a power computer that you wanna be able to work with on a budget. I think it's a great choice. A year later, I am still happy with my decision. Absolutely love this machine. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this video helped you in any way. And ring that bell if you wanna get notified when I make a video. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. With, this is the basic MacBook Air. You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just put, putting it out there.